to share a short message entitled Refuse to be comforted. Refuse to be comforted. Kata kufalijiwa. One of the hindrances of becoming fruitful in our lives uh, is comfort. And when I talk about comfort, some people may think comfort is about um, maybe living in a posh house, driving a big car. Let me tell you, some people can be comforted at any level. Kuna watu anaweza tosheka tu nyumba ambayo inatoshea tu kitanda hapo kando ndiyo anapikia lakini maisha yake yametoshereka vile alivyo Mungu anatumia our passion and our desire kuweza kuona ya kwamba tumezaa matunda so you must be passionate katika maisha yako unasema hata kama niko hiki kiwango natamani niinuke hiki kiwango katika maisha yangu lakini ukiwa comforted na kiwango chochote that is spiritually or materially kuna uwezekano wa kukaa pale na kukosa kuongezeka when we read the story of Hannah in the book of 1 Samuel Maybe we can take a few phrases from chapter 1, from verse 3. It is a story of a woman who refused to be comforted. There was a certain man from Ramadim, a Zufite, from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroham, the son of Erifu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Hannah and, uh, and the other Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty to Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons uh, of Eli, were priests uh, of the Lord. Whenever they came uh, uh, for Elkanah to sac whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of meat uh, to his wife Penina, but to all and to all her sons and daughters. Look at this. But to Hannah, he gave double portion because he loved her and the Lord had crossed her womb. And because the Lord had crossed her womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up uh, to the house of the Lord, her life uh, provoked her till she wept uh, and would not eat. Uh, Elkanah, her husband, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat her? Uh, why are you downhearted? Uh, don't I mean uh, more to you than ten sons? Once, uh, when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiro, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest uh, was sitting on a chair by the doorpost uh, of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. Let's continue reading. And she made a vow, saying, O Lord, if you only look upon your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her to her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. Tunaweza kujifundisha mambo kadhaa na that portion of scripture, especially na maisha ya Hana as a person. Hana tunaona ni mwanamke ambaye alipendwa na mume wake sana. Hata kama hakuwa na watoto. This is contrary to what happens in many families. Wanaume wengi wanapenda yule mke ambaye yako na watoto. Na kuna ndoa nyingi ambazo zimevunjika kwa sababu mama hangepata mtoto. Wengine hata huwa incited na their in-laws. In-laws wanasema huyu mama na hazai watoto utakaa naye namna gani? Lakini tunaona the story of Hana ni tofauti ya kwamba Elkana alimpenda Hana sana 
ya kwamba hata akienda kusacrifice angempatia double portion hata kama hana ye mwenyewe kama mwanamke alikuwa nasikia mimi nataka watoto elkana alikuwa na mfaliji anamwambia mimi kwako ni zaidi ya vijana kumi yani kumaanisha wewe hana tosheka na mimi bwana yako ninakupenda vile ulivyo na mimi kwako ni zaidi ya vijana kumi kwa sababu ya vile ninavyokupenda lakini tunaona hana alikataa kufarijika na mume wake elkana alikataa kufarijika na upendo alikuwa amependwa alikataa kufarijika na mali na vitu alikuwa anapewa na akawa ndani yake kuna kilio na anatamani akaweze kupata mtoto she refused to be comforted although her her husband elkana was comforting her she refused to be comforted na akasema lazima nipate watoto although tunaona ya kwamba uh, penina alihusika pia katika kumprovoke unajua biblia inatufananisha na inafananisha mungu kama na mother ego vile ambavyo anawalea vifaranga wake lakini wale vifaranga kuna mahali the mother ego anataka waondoke na wajue kujitafutia chakula na kile ambacho huwa the mother ego anafanya ni kuondoa manyoya ili hawa vifaranga waanze kuwa uncomfortable na kudungwa na mimba kwa sababu wakikaa katika ile comfort zone hawatawahi kuwa fruitful kujitafutia chakula kuishi maisha yao na hata kuendelea kuzaana na kwa hivyo Mungu na yeye wakati mwingine anaweza kuachilia hali ya kutuprovoka katika maisha yetu kwa sababu Mungu anajua mwanadamu ni, mwa, ni mtu ambaye anaingia katika comfort zone na anatosheka na anakatalia pale ijapokuwa ako na uwezo mkubwa wa kufanya mambo makubwa that is why ukiangalia in creation Mungu alipoumba Adam na Eve hakumpatia mabati ama taa ama vitu vile tunaona siku ya leo alijua ya kwamba the moment you become uncomfortable kulalia mawe utagundua mattress the minute you become uncomfortable kutembea miguu uta discover bicycle na utaenda hivyo udiscover gari mpaka ufikie ndege lakini haya ni mambo ambayo hutokana na kuwa uncomfortable na hali fulani mpaka inakuelekeza kuundua ya kwamba kuna njia ingine nzuri ya kufanya mambo Hana alikataa kufarijika na ikafika mahali akaenda katika nyumba ya Bwana kule Shiro na akamlilia Mungu Sio watu wengi ambao wako comfortable huwa wana uwezo wa kulia na kilio hana alilia nacho hana alilia ya kwamba ni mdomo tu natembea na machozi yanatirika mpaka eli akafikiria huyu ni mlevi because the cry was coming from her heart watu wengi wakiwa in their comfort zone they are not able to break down and seek the see god diligently with brokenness and you know one of the ways you are you attract god's strength into your life is when you are broken hearted praise the name of the living god bwana anasema dhabihu ambao haitaidharau ni moyo uliobondeka na moyo wenye kutubu hao ndio watu wale ambao Mungu huja kuatia nguvu na kuwapa uwezo wake. Wakati Hana alikataa kufarijika, alienda 
akawacha nyama akawacha upendo wa mume wake na akaenda kule shiro na ijapokuwa the system of worship haikuwa kama vile ilivyo siku ya leo ukienda mpaka kule Israeli hana aliweka historia kwa sababu ilikuwa inajulikana ya kwamba mnaabudu kupitia kuhani mkuu ndiye anaingia into the holy of holies lakini hana aliingia katika nyumba ya Bwana akajipeleka express kwa Mungu akamwambia Mungu nataka niweke nadhiri na wewe ya kwamba ukinipa mtoto huyu mtoto kijana nitamtoa kwako lakini hana haku anajua ya kwamba mahali hapa wanaenda kutoa dhabihu elkana anaenda mwaka baada ya mwaka hofni na finehas hawa watoto wa eli walikuwa watu waovu wanafanya mpaka uzinzi katika hekaru na kwa hivyo Mungu alikuwa anatafuta the principle of substitution ni nani naweza kupata ambaye anaweza kuwa mwaminifu kwangu na kwa hivyo Hana alishikana na hitaji la Mungu alishikana na kusudi la Mungu na kwa hivyo Mungu akafungua tumbo ya Hana ambayo ilikuwa imefungwa Praise the name of the living God. So Hana refused to be comforted katika maisha yake akamtafuta Mungu mpaka akapata mtoto. Kuna neno moja ambalo ningetaka tushikanishe katika kitabu cha 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 5 and constant friction between men of corrupt mind who have been lobbed of the truth and who think uh, that godliness is a means to financial gain but godliness with contentment uh, is a great gain for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it But if we have food and clothing we will be content with that. People who want to get richer fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. One of the things that we know is that the Bible does not contradict itself. But the Bible here is saying uh, that godliness with contentment is great gain. Paul anawezaje kusema tutosheke Praise the name of the living God Hallelujah Kwa nini anasema ya kwamba tamaa ya pesa imefanya wengi wakajidunga na hofu Kwa nini Paul anasema wengine wameona kama utaua ni njia ya kutajirika Let me say this that God is so much concerned about our motives when we go before him the bible says uh, when we pray we pray amiss because we pray according to our own evil desires yeah you know when you go into the world the world will tell you that the more you get maybe riches according to your desire the more you are going to be contented so people in the world uh, they pursue for more and more so that they can become content uh, when they get according to their desire but in the kingdom it is different When we come into the kingdom of God you know money is a good servant but a bad master When it comes into the kingdom of God when God is giving us provisions when God is giving us money is so that money is going to be a servant that we are going to use to serve the purposes of God Paul himself says in, in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12 that he is pressing on to get hold of that which Christ Jesus has gotten hold for him not that i have already been obtained all these uh, or already have been made perfect uh, but i press on 
to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold for me. So Paul here is saying, I am placing on. So that means he is not contented. But he is pressing on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of him. If you jump to chapter 4, verse 12, I know what is to be in need, and I know what is to be to have plenty. I have run the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. So Paul and I say, my Akwamba, for me, I know what it means to be contented. But I am going to place on uh, to take hold uh, of that which uh, Christ uh, Jesus has taken uh, hold for me. So our desire for fruitfulness uh, must be aligned uh, to the will of God uh, for our lives. It should not be driven by greed. The opposite of being content uh, is being greedy. And you know that is something that is driving so many people in the world. Greed. What wana ongoz wana tamaa, tamaya mali, tamaya utajiri, tamaya vitu. Mutu wako na mabirioni. Ako na maeka ya maelfu ya shamba. Hawezi saidia mtu. Na badu wana tafuta zingine. Badu wana endea kuiba zingine. That is not the will of God for us. Greed is not the will of God for you as a, as a child of God. Mungu ataki we greedy. Mungu anataka upasu makusudi yake kwa ajili ya maisha yako. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the list and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. So Paul and I say, Mayakwamba, maisha yangu sasa, uh, it's worth nothing. Yeah? My, I consider my life is worth nothing. If only I may finish the lesser and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. As a child of God, your desire should be a desire to fulfill God's purpose for your life. And allowing God to equip you with everything that you need to fulfill God's purpose. God said to Cyrus, because you desire to build the temple, I'll give you treasures hidden in dark places. Why? Because you, you desire to fulfill my purpose of rebuilding the temple. Our desires must be aligned with God's will for our lives. There is a very thin line. Wakati mtu anasukumwa na greed katika maisha yake. Wakati mtu anasukumwa na, na, na competition. Wakati mtu anasukumwa na jirasi. Nataka nipate kwa sababu fulani ya mepata. Nataka nipate diyo ni mushinde fulani. There is a very thin line. Na unaweza kuu natemberea jirasi na competition na greed. Lakini ya uwerewi. Na mungu yaezi kukubaliki. Kwa sababu uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 9, mungu anasema moyo ni mdanganyifu na uko na ugonjwa wa kuficha na mimi na chunguza moyo. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. Our God is a searcher of hearts. Mungu ni mungu achunguzae moyo. Hannah, although she refused to be comforted, Alifika mahali, pengine mbereni, alikuwa naomba tu mtoto, ili aweze kushindana na dhihaka ya penina. 
Baba nipatie mtoto nitadhiakiwa mpaka lini ona huyu mama vile anavyo ni dhihaki ya kwamba sina mtoto Lakini hana akabadisha mama ombi yake akasema it's not about penina it is about me and you god that if you bless me with a child ukinibariki na mtoto huyo mtoto mimi hata sina haja na yeye nitakuletea nitakupatia praise the name of the living god hallelujah wapendwa hatutapata ili tushindane na watu wengine tutapata ama tutakuwa fruitful tutimize makusudi ya Mungu praise the name of the living god Mungu atatupatia kila kitu ambacho tunachohitaji ili tukaweze kutimiza kusudi lake our fruitfulness is for god's glory and that is why for you to be fruitful in this kingdom you must die to self the bible says in the book of john chapter 12 of and uh, verse 24 i tell you the truth that uh, unless uh, a kernel of wheat uh, falls down to the ground and dies it remains uh, only a single seed uh, but if it dies uh, it produces many seeds who you need and he is bringing to us a physical role ana tuletea sheria ya maisha ya kawaida ya kwamba ichapokuwa begu iko na uhai na iko na ukuu na uwezo wa kuzaa haiwezi kuzaa mpaka ianguke kwa mchanga na ioze ife ikifa ndio inaachilia uhai na uwezo wake wa kuzaa na Yesu anaongea juu ya maisha yetu haongei juu ya mbegu anasema maisha ya mtu lazima yaanguke chini yani afe kwa matamanio yake mwenyewe na mashindano na wivu na kujitakia mambo makubwa hili hata kama Mungu atambariki atamuinua sasa sio kwa sababu yake sio kwa sababu ya tamaa zake sio kwa sababu ya kujionyesha sio kwa sababu ya kujulikana lakini ni kwa sababu ya utukufu wa Mungu praise the name of the living god hallelujah that is a principle of this kingdom that for you to be fruitful in this kingdom you must die to self The problem is that so many people are alive. Ah, huh? anataka kuwa mwimbaji mzuri. Ndio ajulikane I am the best singer. Ukiwa unaongozwa na that kind of a motive, Mungu atakuondokea. Praise the name of the living God. Kama motive yako ni show off, Mungu atasema, "No. Praise the name of the living God. I cannot partner with you to show off." I cannot partner with your pride. Praise the name of the living God. Na kwa hivyo ni kumaanisha tunapoomba Mungu atusaidie kuwa fruitful, ni vizuri kumwambia Bwana chunguza ndani ya moyo wangu. Nisafishe Bwana. Nani ajuae moyo? Moyo uko na ugonjwa wa kuficha. Naweza weka bidii kuomba maombi ya kuomba na kufunga. Lakini kumbe I am driven by my own personal greed ya kuwa na mambo that is why mtu kama gehazi hangechukua manto ya elisha kwa sababu gehazi alikuwa anaongozwa na greed gehazi alikuwa anaona ya kwamba ah godliness is a means to financial gain huyu huyu elisha anaachilia huyu naman aende na hizi mali yote na vile tumemuombea hapa na amepona ha? kuna watu wanatumia vipawa vyao kufanya biashara na wamepoteza neema na upako those who trust in worthless gods they forfeit the grace that could be theirs so Mungu akikuita uwe financial akikuita akupatie gift ya working of miracles healing usitumie kufanya biashara 
itumie kufanya mapenzi ya Bwana watu wengi wamepoteza upako na neema wangekuwa watu wakubwa katika ufalme lakini sasa wamepoteza neema ya Mungu juu ya maisha yao kwa sababu ya kuitumia vibaya jina la Bwana nipewe sifa lazima tuelewe vile Mungu anataka tuwe fruitful katika maisha yetu anataka tumusimamie tusimamie makusudi yake tulikuja duniani uchi tutatoka hapa hata kama utakuwa umevalishwa nguo wengine wanavalishangwa mpaka saa ni kama mahali anaenda kabulini atakuwa anaangalia ni saa ngapi hizo vitu zote hata ukivalishwa hautazihitaji fadhali ngitungefungwa na leso uende salama uachie watu suti hapa waendelee kuvaa jina bwana ipewe sifa lakini haidhuru mazishi ya heshima pia ni mapenzi ya bwana ukizikwa na suti moja utatuachia hizo zingine but that is the only the match you can carry praise the name of the living god unakuta mtu ni bilionea lakini ni saduku tu na suti na saa kiatu hata habalishwi mungu hawezi ingia kiatu na ile mali yote alikuwa na hapa duniani ni huzuni kubwa hakutafuta kwa nini mungu amempatia hiyo mali afanye naye mapenzi ya bwana mwingine alienda out of his way kupata utajiri kwa njia ambazo hazimtukuzi bwana Lazima sisi tunapoomba kumzalia bwana matunda tumwambie bwana nataka kuzaa matunda but i am dead to self dying to self let's read some as we finish Psalms 132 from verse 1 o oh lord remember david and all the hardships he endured he swore an oath to the lord and made a vow to the almighty one of ja- to the mighty one of jacob i will not enter my house or go to my bed i will allow no sleep to my eyes no slumber to my eyelids till i find a praise for the lord a dwelling for the mighty one of jacob tunajua daudi alipofanyika mfalme alisema aliita israel yote akawaambia we must go and bring back the ark of the covenant that was neglected in time of Saul. Daudi ni mtu ambaye alikataa kuingia katika comfort zone. Alisema ya kwamba sitaingia kwa nyumba yangu, sitapatia kope za macho yangu usingizi. Watu wengi wakiingia viwango fulani vya maisha wanatosheka. Ile ku place on, ile kuendelea kumtafuta Mungu kwa bidii, wanawacha. Na liposa tuko na watu wengi spiritual dwarfs tuko na watu tumefika tu kiwango fulani na kuna ceiling ambayo tunashindwa kuvunja kwa sababu tukifika mahali fulani comfort ambayo tuko nayo katika maisha yetu inatutoshereza tunasahau ya kwamba tunaweza kuona Mungu kwa njia zaidi that time david was going for the ark of the covenant people were still worshiping but in a religious way But David said I don't want to uh, be involved in, in religious worship I desire the, to see the glory of God I desire the presence of God wapendwa tusitosheke na dini tusitosheke na ukawaida lazima kuwe na watu ambao wanasema thank god for this far he has brought me you are Ebenezer but I know there is still a higher level and when you pursue those levels you are pursuing them with a sincere and a clean heart that i am doing this for the glory of god unapotafuta mungu unamwambia bwana i know you can raise me to become a billionaire it's not about you it's about him it's a billionaire to do god's will it's a billionaire to do god's purpose in the kingdom wewe hautakuwa bilionea kama wale wa ulimwengu utatumia utajiri na ufanisi Mungu atakao kupatia kuendelea kutekeleza makusudi yake na hiyo ndiyo njia ambayo Mungu atakufanya uongezeke na baadaye ukalidhi uzima wa milele Muzika